All right, welcome back to part three um, of my felting a container. <clears throat> so this is the piece that I ended up with. It did not quite work out where I want to put the structural part of it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of offset it and just make it part of the design. <clears throat> I cut it instead of using it in the salvage because I realized I didn't want it too thick at the top and I'm thinking I might pull the fabric over the top and the bottom. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. These are the extra pieces that were left over from cutting. So I am going to, I kind of configured it so this, is that right, um, is going to be the bottom. I'm going to piece those together and stitch them and those will be the underneath bottom of the box. And then I will end up putting a piece of wood. Uh, that I sandwich in fabric in the bottom to add that strength and support so it doesn't like dip in when she picks it up and moves it. So I'm not really wasting anything. Uh, in my original design when I was thinking about it I was actually going to uh, use the excess and maybe do uh, cut out flowers or some design but I decided not. But another aspect of my design considerations. So most of the colors work really good, except if there if this is on the inside and there's no blue on the outside, that sort of bothered me. And this is like sort of almost like a slate gray blue, so it's kind of an odd color. Um, what I was talking about before was, let's get the fabric right here, sort of doing, instead of having like the seam allowance, just sewing that across the top in a little bit of, you know, maybe half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch, and do it on the bottom too. Which led me to try and figure out how I could get the right color so that blue didn't seem so off to me. I decided to look through my stash and I happen to have this wool thread that, uh, ah, get that off of there, that matches the orange in those roses or flowers or pop, yeah, I think they're roses, that matches those perfectly. So if I did some sort of embroidery work on top of that. But then I also found um, some pearl cotton that I have that is not the right color of blue. But if it's not touching that blue, then it, I don't know if you can tell, it brings it out. So I'm going to do some sort of embroidery um, in certain areas. And I'm thinking of doing maybe little leaves that are outlined in the orange and then filled in with the pearl cotton I have from another felting project that I did. I have several pieces of felt that I already made. And I think I will cut these into the approximate shapes and use them to sort of raise the design. So I think that that might be really cool. But I'm I'm happy that 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 blue and that orange. I think that's really going to bring it in, bring it all all those colors together, so it doesn't feel awkward and disjointed. Uh, so when I come back, uh, 
I will maybe be showing you embroidery. I'm not sure. I'm busy working on other Christmas presents too, so I'm kind of scattered <laughs> and all over the place. But I'm excited to, to see how this turns out. I might make it narrower. I don't know, because it should just be easy to get in and out of, but not too deep. And I also want to handle um, so that when she carries it upstairs to organize her jewelry, uh, it's easy to grab. Because, you know, when you go up the stairs for anything, you take about 20 things with you so you don't have to come back down. So I'm trying to make it easily portable. <laughs> so I will see you in a little bit for a continuation of part three. All right, we are back. And you can see from the pictures my original design idea I was not liking. It was just too cumbersome looking. So what I ended up doing, I'll try and get a picture that's close up. Um, I found some orange beads that I had that end up being really shiny and the texture is really cool. And then I took that blue and went ahead and just did um, French knots very randomly. Uh, I was kind of inspired with the beads by something I saw in a quilt, or I mean a beading book that I had decades ago. And this woman had done this beautiful piece with just beads that was inspired by how beads look when you spill them. So I kept that in mind. And it's not quite as good as I envisioned in my artistic obscure brain, uh, but I like it. And then I like the blue and it just adds a fun texture. So I went ahead and sewed the lining, but I'm not doing a seam allowance. I am not folding it like that because it would get too thick, I think, for such a small container. So I wanted a little crisper. So it's going to be folded like that. And then the bottom is also going to be folded. So it'll have um, the fabric on the top and the bottom. So I told you I was going to use coat hangers for the support structure. That's taking a lot of um, logistic work, engineering. <laughs> so I have four pieces and then I will be doing um, a piece that's a handle and that will be inserted separately and sewn in after these go in. So these will slip in in between the lining and the felt and then I will pull it down tight, get the, um, the coat hanger to the top of the, to meet the top of the felt and then I will stitch it down so that it's nice and secure. And then do the next piece and stretch if I need to. Um, I think I measured it right. In my instructions I explained my measuring process. But there you go. Um, I will come back when I have these in and then uh, and probably the, the handles and the base or the handle and the base and maybe finish up uh, with what I'm going to do to the handle to make it a little bit more decorative. So that's the progress so far. See you in a bit. Hey, here we are, part three again. Uh, my final step. Uh, so here we have the basket or the container, which I'm super happy with. Uh, there's, there's some inconsistencies, uh, <laughs> but of course, I think what I did here was I did not, see it's bunched, let's see, you can see from the angles, so it sort of buckles out, which I think is kind of cute, but I think it's because I did not have enough of the lining material. 
that I pulled that too tight without pulling the felt as well. So the felt is a little bit wider um, than the lining because the lining is pretty taut. But I like it. I think it's it looks used and loved already. And so now I'm a little bit excited, but we'll see. I get really excited when I have new ideas and I have concepts that I haven't tried before. So I decided I want something on the handle that's soft to grab and also just decorative in general. <clears throat> and um, so I thought, what if I felted onto this? Because I didn't want something sliding back and forth. I didn't want it just to just wrap yarn or something on it because it's going to build up and then loosen up on the edges. So I'm excited. It might fail. <laughs> this is my experiment piece. And when I was felting it, I was doing this, which is not going to work with this because I can't flip that around. So hopefully the concept works. I have some of the felt, or I mean the, some of the churro roving that I had dyed before, uh, just in various colors. This isn't really going to match, so that's going to go underneath first. And I'm spreading it out, like, really, really well, because I want the fibers to be going in all directions. It's not going to be as easy as working on a flat piece to make sure that I'm getting the directions, opposite directions well. So I'm spreading it out really well so that I get fibers going in all directions when I, when I put it on the handle. It should be interesting. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it works out really well. <laughs> I'm excited. It's like this is my fun in in the world. It's not going shopping necessarily, or I don't know. I my fun, my fun is this kind of stuff. Is getting ideas and getting sparked. So I'm wrapping it inside. I'm going to be going around and then inside the coat hanger wire because I think if I'm right in my logistics. This is going to help felt it so it doesn't slide because there's a slight bend. Um, it's impossible to get anything or that you work with with coat, high, coat hangers to get completely straight. I mean, we're not a factory, right? So I'm doing the foundation, just getting fibers wrapped around the two different coat hangers in the hopes that that helps prevent more slide because I don't want the handle to slide back and forth. I don't think I'll be able to stop it from completely sliding and if you wanted to slide it on purpose you could uh, but I don't want it to just be loose. So tucking that in I'm really excited how this came out, and I think it'll match her living room well, so here's hoping. Okay, tuck that in. I think that's enough of that. Now I have more of the, the color that matches. So the good orange. I'm going to just spread that out on the top first. And I think it'll be okay if some of that yellow comes through. And I also have some really tiny shortcuts in the wool that are darker. So I'm hoping that that adds that adds some depth to it, maybe. So I laid that one on top, and I'm just kind of kind of wrap those. I don't know if it's going to be thick enough if it works, uh, but we shall see. 
See, as you can see, I'm just being completely random here. And I'm going to kind of twist it around if I can to see and feel. All right, now what I had done on this piece, which I liked, was I used some of this to wrap around. And this is a wool. So it felt it in that experimental piece pretty well. And this I did because I thought, oh, that'll help keep it in place while I start to felt. So I'm going to wrap this wool string around to secure around the handle. And I have a my sort of die utilitarian um, dish rag over here that I will use to put on the container itself just so um, I don't get <laughs> I don't ruin all the work that I've already done or get it too wet and make a mess when I did the experimental piece, I just ran that under the faucet. So I'm getting this a little bit snug, but not tight. And there's still a lot of give in there. But just enough so that stray fibers are um, controlled. Oh, something else that I wanted to mention that I forgot. Uh, about felting and every time that I've done it I end up with way too many hairs it just that are big and long and really obnoxious and I looked around online and somebody suggested using a blowtorch to get rid of the hairs I've tried the razor and that works for smaller pieces um, but so the blowtorch idea led me to think, well, what about a heat gun? Would that work? And it wouldn't be nearly as dangerous as a, as a blowtorch. <laughs> and it works. So I'm really happy with that. So if you have a heat gun, just heat it up. I read that you, can, um, you should get it wet. I did mine dry and it was fine. And then after I got the initial burns off, I went with a toothbrush and brushed off all the the burnt fibers and then um, did it again on low so I'm I was really excited about that 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 seemed to work out really well and give me a smoother surface okay so we have my dish towel all tucked in to protect the basket itself and then I have a bowl of soapy water here just want to get those fibers wet and squeeze. I'm excited about this idea. I have a tendency to have an idea and want to hurry up and and um, go through all the steps and see if it worked. <laughs> I get excited like a kid. And did I bring one back? No, I was thinking a toothbrush would help. Okay, so I'm going to turn that sideways and just start rubbing it this way. And like I said before, when I did this, I was able to do that. And this is not going to be the same at all. And then pull up those edges. And just keep doing that. And then I'm also, what I did with the other one was... Um, I pulled it down like that and pulled it down over and over to get these fibers going. And I also used a, um, a toothbrush and that seemed to help. I like how the orange is disappearing. So I will stop this segment and go to fast forward and then show you what I'm looking at. I'm excited!